This morning on CBS 2 News, moving forward after city officials fire the director of police accountability, what the interim director says is next for the office. Plus, pushing for police reform, the effort from lawmakers to find common ground. Plus tonight, fighters going head to head at the Idaho Central Arena, a look ahead at the Front Street Fights 25. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. This is a live look of downtown Boise. It is Friday. It's February 3rd, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And Vasily Varlamos, he, it is Friday. He is out in the elements this morning. And Vasily, hearing a warm-up headed our way. Yeah, warm up is headed our way and right now we are seeing warmer temperatures than what we saw yesterday, but Sarah, it is very cold still outside right now. I can see my breath in front of me and we're sitting at about 24 degrees outside. We'll see that over the next couple of hours, but as for your weather in 60, we are going to see that weather advisory still in effect. We have an air stagnation advisory in effect right now and that'll be in effect till about one o'clock today. That advisory spans across Southwest Oregon and we may see some haze like we saw yesterday morning, but but some winds in the upper Treasure Valley may break that up just a little bit. Now moving to the breakfast forecast, we're going to see temperatures at 24 degrees at 6 and at 7 o'clock today. And then at 8 a.m. we'll see temperatures jump up to 26 degrees. When you head out the door this morning, you'll notice slightly warmer temperatures. We'll be at 28 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump up to 33 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 42 degrees. That'll come at 3 p.m. No, thank you, Vasily. Looking forward to the warm up. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning for you. Uh, not seeing any reports of anything slowing you down. It is cold out there, as Vasily said, but it is looking clear, folks. So when you do eventually get in the car, turn on KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, it's been less than a month since the interim director of police accountability took over on January 10th. City officials firing the previous director, Jesus Hara. The mayor says for invasion of privacy. CBS 2's Michaela Elich spoke with Nicole Schaefer about how she is planning to move the department forward. No, Ed, it never even crossed my mind. Working as a new interim director for the Office of Police Accountability was never on Nicole Schaefer's list of to do's. But when the opportunity presented itself, she says she knew she had to take it. As an administrative role, I thought I would be a good fit and be able to give back to my community by taking on this interim responsibility. Schaefer currently works for the city of Boise in the attorney's office and has years of leadership experience. So I'm the criminal senior manager. Um, over the 16 deputy prosecuting attorneys that we have in the office. Um, I've been a prosecutor for 25 years, all in the state of Idaho. It was just last month, Boise City Council voted 5-1 to one to remove acting OPA director Jesus Hara. After Mayor McLean said Hara was reviewing random recorded police body cam videos, claiming it was an invasion of privacy. This happened after the city conducted an investigation into retired police officer Matt Bringleson who was found participating in a white nationalist conference. So Nicole, amid all the problems, not just here, but everywhere, how can you ensure that police and departments are being held accountable? I'm following the mandates of the city regulations and making sure that um, the Office of Accountability is upholding those as well. While serving in this position isn't permanent for Schaefer, she says her goal is to help move the department forward. I think it is important to, um, as a council, as a city, know what's going on and know if there's anything we can do to make changes to help um, make sure that law enforcement is acting in our best interest and we're acting in theirs. Now, Hara is suing the city of Boise, claiming wrongful termination and a violation of Idaho's Whistleblower Act. Meanwhile, Bringleson claims discrimination. And the third party investigation into the Boise Police Department is looking for any potential racism that still is underway. Let's turn to national news because President Biden is hopeful that Congress can work out a deal on police reform. Now, yesterday, members of the Congressional Black Caucus spoke with the president at the White House. The Democrats say they're ready to work with Republicans on a bill.
We are committed to meaningful, uh, substantive reforms and a focus on public safety for all communities. The group's chairman saying there is agreement on a way forward, but he gave few specifics. The White House calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which limits unnecessary use of force. It restricts the use of no-knock warrants and chokeholds and limits qualified immunity for police. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott tweeting he wants to find a common sense solution to pass and the Justice and Policing Act is a non-starter. Well, here in Idaho, three bills aimed at providing property tax relief for homeowners now being introduced. They all have the same goal, but each one proposes a different approach to get there. Now, Senator Scott Grow proposing dedicating about four and a half percent of the state sales tax revenue to what would essentially be ongoing property tax rebates to homeowners. I feel that the existing state tax structure is too high as evidenced by the ongoing budget surpluses we've had for the last two years. I know there re there's talk of recession. I still feel that structurally we've got money to handle this. Representative Bruce Scoggs' bill would restore an annual property tax index. Right now, property tax exemption is capped at $100,000 or 50% of home value. This bill would bring that exemption back up initially to about $224,000 then increase as the home value increases. Commercial since 2016, just on those, is paying 24.1% less in taxes. Homeowners are paying 20.5% more since that time. So that is the inequality that has happened, and that's just on those old properties. And the third bill from Speaker Mike Moye has components of both the first two bills, but it would create a new $300 million fund called the School District Facility Fund, those schools could then use the money to pay off school bonds and levies. That the school districts don't have the funds to take care of. This provides that opportunity. Tax relief again on the other side because the taxpayers don't have to take tax themselves to pay for it. If one or all three make it to the House floor, there will be a lot of debate. We'll see which solutions lawmakers think might work best in the coming weeks. Well, folks, looking ahead, Tree Fort is unveiling a map of plans for Julia Davis Park for this year's festival. There are two zones, the Fort Zone and the Wristband Zone. The Fort Zone is free and open to the public for things like Ale Fort, Kid Fort, Radio Land, food trucks and bars. Meanwhile, the Wristband Zone does require a pass, be it five day or single pass or a main stage pass to get in. That area will have the main stage, the hideout stage, the garden dome, art installations and more. You can check out more about the announcements and this year's plan for this year's festival. Just head to our website. And tonight, you can see hard-hitting action in the Front Street Fights 25. It's at the Idaho Central Arena. CBS2 catching up with some of the fighters to ask what fans can expect. You can expect to see a whole lot of excitement. If you've never seen a uh, sanctioned fight with two trained athletes, uh, you're really in for a treat. Uh, when you see me perform, you see a style, you see an art behind it that I've been practicing my whole life. I get really excited about my teammates fighting more so than when I fight, just because I, I know what they've gone through. It's just going to be an exciting card. We have some bangers on the card, so it's going to be a night of incredible fights. You can see it all starting at 7 o'clock. You can also get tickets at the Arena Box Office or Ticketmaster Online. They start at just 25 bucks. Yeah, well, hey, let's send it back to Vasily Varlamos. Oh, hey, it looks like he is inside, folks, and he's kicking off our morning with, of course, our favorite people over at Kissin 92.3. Vasily. Yeah, much warmer in here right now. I am hanging out with the Kissin 92.3 crew, Alana and Chris. And so we're going to be doing some weekly segments with you guys. Can you guys just tell us a little bit about yourselves for our viewers? Yeah, thank you. And welcome to our plush studios here in uh, downtown Boise. But yeah, we do a morning show here on Kissin 92.3 Country Music. Um, live here, work here, love it here. 
Yeah, we both have uh, we both have families. We you know we we we're out and about. Like unlike some morning shows that I won't name because you know we play nicely. We're here. We live here. We do the things that uh, that people who live in the Treasure Valley do, and we love we love living here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just an absolutely awesome crew, and we're gonna get let you guys get to know them just a little bit more this morning. But first, let's get over to weather, and we'll tell you a little bit about what we're gonna expect today. Now we are gonna see a lot of clouds today here in the Treasure Valley. We're gonna see temperatures up in the 40s today. Now, 42 degrees going to be our high. We're going to see lots of clouds, but we may see some sun breaks in the afternoon, and then we're going to see some slightly breezy conditions as well. That may help break up a little bit of that inversion. Now, as for the chances of precipitation, we're going to stay dry today, and we'll stay dry for most of Saturday, but by Saturday night, we are going to see some showers move into the region, and then on Sunday, we'll see scattered showers throughout the day here in the valley. It'll mostly be rain on the valley floor, but we may see a wintry mix if we head up into higher elevations. And then on Monday and Tuesday will stay mostly dry. There is a chance of seeing some uh, evening showers on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, there is a chance of possibly scattered showers as well. Now, as for your four headlines, we're going to see a gradual warm up this week. Temperatures already warming up into the 40s and we'll warm up into the mid 40s this weekend. We'll stay above average all weekend. We'll stay mostly dry through Saturday. And then we have those scattered showers to worry about on Sunday. Now, hour by hour, we'll be at 28 degrees at 9 a.m. Temperatures will jump into the 30s by 10 o'clock and we'll be at 33 degrees around 11 o'clock. And then we'll be at 37 degrees around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 42 degrees. That'll come at 3 p.m. Now temperatures will range up into the mid 40s by Saturday and Sunday. 45 on Saturday and 44 degrees going to be the high on Sunday. Then we'll drop back down to our average on Monday and Tuesday. 42 degrees going to be the high on Monday and 42 on Tuesday. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. Looking forward to that warm up. All right, folks, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. We do have a traffic collision out at Bellagio Drive in Meridian. Um, just keep that in mind if you are headed that way. It does look residential, though, so uh, should be avoiding that for the most part. Another traffic collision down on 16th Avenue South and 2nd Street in Nampa. That did just happen about 10 minutes ago, folks. So again, 16th Avenue South and 2nd Street in Nampa. We did just have a collision come down, folks. So if you're heading that way, just give yourself a little extra time. But as you can see, it is quiet out there as we kick off your Friday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. When you do get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a spy balloon spotted in the sky where it's from and why officials say they won't take it down. Plus a Utah, a company in Utah hoping to popularize a different kind of air travel, a look at the flying motorcycle they're working on. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. First, taking a look at yesterday's question. A new study says this is the most important thing you need to be content at work. A lot of great guesses, but the answer, a window. Gotta see outside sometimes. All right, now for today's question. Just 2% of people will do this in the month of February. Hmm. All right, folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 5.15 on your Friday. Welcome back. The Pentagon says it believes a Chinese spy balloon is floating over the continental U.S. for days. Now, it was spotted yesterday over Billings, Montana, which is home to the nation's sensitive nuclear missile facilities. Officials say they're tracking that balloon, but have chosen not to take it down. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the latest. A large round object has been seen floating near Billings, Montana, big enough for residents to spot from the ground. Well, what the heck is that? That's not the sun. And according to my little planet guide, it's not a planet. The Pentagon says it has been tracking a high altitude surveillance balloon almost certainly launched by China. NORAD has followed it in U.S. airspace for days. The balloon is currently traveling at an altitude well above commercial air traffic and does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground. Right now, there is a ground stop on our airport and this thing is up in the sky. Air traffic was halted at the Billings Airport for two hours Wednesday. 
A source familiar with the situation tells CBS News fighter jets were scrambled as President Biden considered shooting the balloon down. But the Pentagon advised against it, concerned falling debris could be a danger to civilians. Montana is home to one of the nation's nuclear missile fields. Officials say they took steps to protect sensitive sites. They have done this before, but it's it's not common. And the, the surveillance balloon is uh, believed to be loitering longer than previous uh, surveillance balloons uh, that the Chinese have sent over. This comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken was expected to travel to Beijing this weekend to meet with the Chinese president. Overnight, China's foreign ministry said, quote, we hope both sides can handle the matter calmly and prudently. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Well, hey, take a look at this, folks. A Utah drone company developing a flying motorcycle. Yeah, you heard that right. It's essentially a drone capable of carrying an entire adult person. They hope one day the technology will be ready for people to make their daily commute to work. Recreational vehicle is probably where this is all going to start. The FAA has regulations uh, that kind of limit the use of a lot of these products right now. The team at Electrofly designs custom drones, mostly meant for deliveries, but their dream is to use that technology to make flying more accessible. So far, they've tested it using very heavy boards with hopes they might try very limited manned flight later this year. Cool stuff. All right, folks, let's switch over to weather because Vasily Varlamos is with our friends Alana and Chris on the morning show Kissin 92.3. Vasily, tell us how it's going. Yeah, it's going great over here at the station. And you guys have been doing this for a long time, correct? How long exactly have you guys been hosting Kiss in 92.3? Uh, oh, man. I mean, watch watch a long time. <laughs> I mean, I still got this youthful appearance here. No, we've been here at Kiss in 92.3 for, uh, since 19, 2019. Mm -hmm. And then previous to that at another station here in town. But I've uh, been living here since the 2000s, like before 2010. Oh, yeah. The, in the before times. In the before times. <laughs> the early 2000s, Vasily. <laughs> and so you guys have worked in prior cities as well. And what you guys do here, you play some great country music, right? Thank you. Yeah, we um, we love it right now. I mean, we have some great artists in the format, like mm. Chris Stapleton. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Morgan Wallen's about to release 36 mm -hmm. songs uh, in about a month on a brand new album, which is like three albums in one. So, I mean, with artists, these new artists, newer artists like that, we're super lucky to be playing awesome music. And we've got some great programs coming out for you guys, too, in the next week or so. We're playing a ton of fun games. Can you tell us a little bit about Better Than Alana, too, one of those fun <laughs> games that we've been doing? This is great. You're going to step up to the plate today, by the way. 7.30 mm -hmm. on the radio every day, we have a challenger from Kissing Country face off against Alana. I give her three questions. Uh, I give the listener the same three questions. Whoever gets it more right uh, is the winner. Alana, you um, may or may not be winning so far I overall. might be winning. <laughs> Well, we'll see if she wins at 7.30, but right now let's move to weather. And right now we're seeing temperatures kind of low, but we're going to jump into the 40s by today. We're going to jump to 42 degrees. That's just about average. Now the jet stream is starting to shift a little bit. We're going to see more of a westerly flow. That's going to pull some warmer coastal air into the region. And temperatures should be above average all weekend. We'll see some low pressure systems lining off the coast, and we'll see some showers moving into the region on Sunday. Now as for today, Futurecast showing us some clouds that we're going to see all day today. Day. Now those clouds will stick around all day on Saturday and then by the end of Saturday and into Sunday we are going to see some showers move into the region. Now moving to the seven day forecast 42 degrees the high today we will jump into the mid 40s over the weekend then we'll drop back down to 42 degrees on Monday and Tuesday and we'll continue dropping into Wednesday and Thursday 41 going to be the high on Wednesday and 39 looking like the high on Thursday in the valley. Meanwhile in the mountains 37 degrees going to be the high today temperatures will drop to 35 degrees on Saturday Sunday and Monday before they jump up to 36 degrees on Tuesday in the mountains. And then temperatures will drop to 34 degrees on Wednesday and 33 degrees on Thursday. And on Sunday, they'll see snow showers in the mountains. 
Thank you, Vasily. Looking to the much more fun with the Kiss and Crew. All right, it is 521, folks. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there at I-84, and it is very quiet on this Friday morning, folks. Thanks for waking up with us. We do have a traffic collision out in Nampa on 16th Avenue and 2nd Street. It did occur about 20 minutes ago, folks, so uh, just give yourself some time if you're in that area. Again, this is downtown Nampa, 16th Avenue and 2nd Street. We do have a collision as well. We also have a collision in Meridian. It's on Bellagio Drive that does look like a um, an residential area folks so I uh, shouldn't slow you down at all again that's Bellagio Drive in Meridian other than that folks when you do get in the car just make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI that is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, raising awareness for cardiovascular disease this National Wear Red Day. Why the American Heart Association wants more women to ask about their risk for heart attacks. Plus, a new COVID variant now causing concern. Why health experts say you may see more people getting sick. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 524. Welcome back. Today is National Wear Red Day. It's when the American Heart Association encourages everyone to wear red to raise awareness for cardiovascular disease in women. The association says less than half of women recognize that heart disease is the number one killer of women. NYU Langone cardiologist Dr. Harmony Reynolds says it's vital. Women seek help for all types of possible symptoms of the cardiovascular problem. It's scary to think, could this be a heart attack? I think that people don't go to the hospital because they're afraid that it might be a heart attack. And then what? Well, then what is we treat it. The Heart Association says life events, including pregnancy, menopause, and stress, can impact your cardiac, your cardiac health. And we are learning more information and new information about the newest subvariants of Omicron now circulating across the globe. Now it appears to bypass some of what currently keeps us from getting sick from coronavirus. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how. Hey there, everybody. This new variant has the potential to interrupt progress that has us moving toward the end of the pandemic, according to those tracking it. And here's why. Not only does CH.1.1 or the Orthrus COVID-19 subvariant of Omicron appear to have a Delta-like mutation, which caused a deadly COVID surge early on in the pandemic, but this new preprint study from researchers at Ohio State University found it's on the list of variants and subvariants that evade what are called neutralizing antibodies. Those come from previous infection or vaccines. They neutralize or defend your cells against the virus to keep it from entering the body. Without that ability, this newer Orthrus CH.1.1 could spread like wildfire. You know, it's hard to believe they will be more infectious than the uh, current variants out there, the XBB variant, which is very highly contagious. We'll just have to wait and see. The latest CDC numbers show CH.1.1 is now responsible for just under about 2% of U.S. new cases. While that's low for now, the other reason this could slow the much sought after end of the pandemic is that as it evolves, as with any new variant or subvariant, it has the potential to take on new properties and wreak havoc in the body in ways we've not seen before. It's always a game of catch up with uh, with COVID, trying to figure out what the new variants are doing. It has now been reported in 60 different countries. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Coming up on CBS 2 News, three bills introduced in the legislature with the same goal, how leg the legislature is tackling property taxes. And a look at your primetime lineup tonight, folks. Join us at 10 and don't forget about our question of the day. This morning on CBS 2 News, moving forward after city officials fire the director of police accountability. What the interim director says is next for the office. Plus, pushing for police reform, the effort from lawmakers to find common ground. Plus, tonight, fighters going head to head at the Idaho Central Arena. A look ahead at the Front Street Fights 25. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Now, I'm actually not outside this Friday. I am indoors right next to the Kissin 92.3 radio station. They just began their show on 92.3, and we're going to be talking with them throughout the morning as we're going to be doing programs with them throughout the next couple of weeks, and it's going to be a fun time. We're doing a ton of fun stuff, and I'll actually be on there at 7.30 today. So, going to be a blast this morning, but right now we'll get to your weather in 60, and we do have a weather advisory still in effect. Now that weather advisory is an air stagnation advisory. The air is going to remain stagnant today. We may see a light haze this morning as we are expecting that advisory to end at about 1 p.m. today. So there might be a little haze in the air. We're going to see a lot of clouds today. Now that cloud cover is going to stick around not only today but for the next couple of days and we're going to stay dry today as well. Now those dry conditions are going to stick around and we'll see those low or those temperatures in the 20s this morning. We'll be at about 24 degrees at 6 a.m. We'll be at 24 at 7 a.m. as well before we, before we jump to 26 degrees at 8 a.m. Now when you head out the door this morning we will jump into the 30s around 11 o'clock 33 degrees going to be the high the temperature at 11 we'll jump to our high of 42 degrees at 3 p.m now 40 degrees going to be the high over in nampa and in emmett 41 degrees looking like the high over in caldwell and 37 degrees going to be the high in mccall today looking forward to it thank you vasily it is 5 31 almost 5 32 on your friday cbs 2 news and news talk kboi bringing you team traffic all morning long right now live look outside courtesy of ACHD. We are seeing a few more headlights out there, but uh, everything is running along smooth. It's cold, but clear. Um, we do have a traffic collision out in Nampa at 16th Avenue and 2nd Street. This is downtown Nampa, folks. So if you are heading that way, again, 16th Avenue and 2nd Street in Nampa, just give yourself a couple extra minutes. Other than that, we are looking good out there this morning. So when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you tune to Newstalk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, it's been less than a month since the interim director of police accountability took over on January 10th. City officials firing the previous director, Jesus Hara, the mayor saying for an invasion of privacy. CBS 2's Michaela Ellett spoke with Nicole Schaefer about how she plans to move the department forward. No, Ed, it never even crossed my mind. Working as a new interim director for the Office of Police Accountability was never on Nicole Schaefer's list of to-dos. But when the opportunity presented itself, she says she knew she had to take it. As an administrative role, I thought I would be a good fit and be able to give back to my community by taking on this interim responsibility. Schaefer currently works for the city of Boise in the attorney's office and has years of leadership experience. So I'm the criminal senior manager um, over the 16 deputy prosecuting attorneys that we have in the office. Um, I've been a prosecutor for 25 years, all in the state of Idaho. It was just last month, Boise City Council voted 5-1 to one to remove acting OPA director Jesus Hara. After Mayor McLean said Hara was reviewing random recorded police body cam videos claiming it was an invasion of privacy. This happened after the city conducted an investigation into retired police officer Matt Bringleson, who was found participating in a white nationalist conference. So Nicole, amid all the problems, not just here, but everywhere, how can you ensure that police and departments are being held accountable? I'm following the mandates of the city regulations and making sure that um, the Office of Accountability is upholding those as well. While serving in this position isn't permanent for Schaefer, she says her goal is to help move the department forward. I think it is important to, um, as a council, as a city, know what's going on and know if there's anything we can do to make changes to help. Um, make sure that law enforcement is acting in our best interest and we're acting in theirs. Well, President Biden hopeful that Congress can work out a deal on police reform. Now, yesterday, members of the Congressional Black Caucus spoke with the president at the White House. The Democrats say they're ready to work with Republicans on a bill. We are committed to meaningful, uh, substantive reforms and a focus on public safety for all communities. The group's chairman said there is agreement on a way forward, but gave few specifics. 
The White House calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which limits unnecessary uses of force, including restricting use of no-knock warrants, chokeholds, and limits qualified immunity for police. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott tweeting he wanted to find a common sense solution to pass and that the Justice and Policing Act is a non-starter. Well, back here in Idaho, three bills aimed at providing property tax relief for homeowners are being introduced. They all have the same goal, each one proposing a different approach to get there. Senator Scott Grove proposing a dedicated 4.4.5% of sales of the state sales tax revenue to what would essentially be ongoing property tax rebates to homeowners. I feel that the existing state tax structure is too high as evidenced by the ongoing budget surpluses we've had for the last two years. I know the re there's stock of recession. I still feel that structurally we've got money to handle this. Representative Bruce Scoggs' bill would restore the annual property tax index. Right now, property tax exemption, it's capped at 100000 or 50% of the home's value. This bill would bring that exemption back up initially to about $224,000, then increase as the home value increases. Commercial since 2016, just on those, is paying 24.1% less in taxes. Homeowners are paying 20.5% more since that time. So that is the inequality that has happened, and that's just on those old properties. And the third bill from Senator Mike Moyer has components of both of the two first bills, but it would create a new $300 million fund called the School District Facility Fund. Those schools could then use the money to pay off school bonds and levies. That the school districts don't have the funds to take care of. This provides that opportunity. Tax relief again on the other side because the taxpayers don't have to take tax themselves to pay for it. Now, if one or all three make it to the House floor, there is sure to be a lot of debate. We'll see which solutions lawmakers think might work best in the coming weeks. Well, folks, tonight you can see the hard-hitting action of Front Street Fights 25 at the Idaho Central Arena. CBS2 caught up with some of the fighters to ask what fans can expect. You can expect to see a whole lot of excitement. If you've never seen a uh, sanctioned fight with two trained athletes, uh, you're really in for a treat. Uh, when you see me perform, you see a style, you see an art behind it that I've been practicing my whole life. I get really excited about my teammates fighting more so than when I fight, just because I, I know what they've gone through. It's just going to be an exciting card. We have some bangers on the card, so it's going to be a night of incredible fights. You can see it all starting at 7 p.m. You can still get tickets at the Arena Off box office or Ticketmasters online. They start at 25 bucks. All right, folks, it is Friday. That means Vasily Varlamos is out and about. And Vasily, you're hanging out with our friends at Kissin 92.3. How's it going? It's going great over here. I'm actually letting them record right now, but I'm going to hop back in there after the break and we're going to talk a little bit more with Alana and Chris about everything they're doing and what we're going to be doing with them over the next couple of weeks and months. Now, as for today, we are going to see conditions mostly cloudy. We are going to see temperatures a little bit warmer than what we've seen over the past couple of days. We're going to jump into the 40s today and we're going to stay in the 40s at least for the next couple of days. Now, those 40 degree temperatures, we're going to see a high of 42 degrees today in Boise and across the Treasure Valley we are going to see temperatures in the low 40s as those highs now with today we are going to also see a light haze in the air due to that air stagnation advisory and that stagnant air will stick around just for today but we are going to see a little bit more breezy winds in the area and that may break up some of that inversion that we've been seeing now again we're going to see lots of clouds today and we're going to see some sun breaks but we also may see some precipitation this weekend as for today we will remain dry and we'll stay dry for most of Saturday. We're going to see those clouds throughout the day on Saturday as well. But then by Sunday, we'll see some precipitation move into the region. Now, it's mostly going to be rain on the valley floors. But if you head up to higher elevations, you may see a wintry mix as temperatures may be a little bit chillier up there. Here in the valley, we'll see even low temperatures above freezing tomorrow Now at, or tomorrow and on Sunday. Now, by Monday, we'll stay dry. And those dry conditions will stick around for most of Tuesday. But Tuesday night, we may have another low pressure system move into the region. And that may 
may bring some rain to us on Wednesday as well. Now, the four headlines, we are going to see dry conditions through, through Saturday. We're going to see this gradual warm up this week that we've seen. We're seeing temperatures in the 20s as soon as last week, and now we're seeing temperatures already in the 40s. Now, we'll jump into the mid 40s this weekend. Now, as for today, temperatures will jump out of the, the 20s fairly quickly, and we'll be in the 30s by midday, leading to our high today of 42 degrees. Now, we'll see temperatures again jump into the mid 30s by tomorrow. We'll be at 45 degrees tomorrow before temperatures drop down to 44 degrees on Sunday, and then we'll drop back down to our average on Monday and Tuesday. We're going to drop to 42 degrees on Monday and Tuesday, and temperatures are going to continue to gradually decrease as we head into next week. Next week, we'll see those temperatures drop down into the high 30s, but again, much warmer than what we've seen over the past couple of days. Going to be a warm next couple of days. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. We are looking forward to that warm up. It is 540, now 541 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there at I-84 this morning. Folks, your commute is looking good. It is clear but very cold. Seeing a few more headlights out there this morning. We do have a traffic collision out in Nampa. It's downtown at 16th Avenue and 2nd Street. So folks, uh, just give yourself some extra time if you are heading that way. Again, that's 16th Avenue and 2nd Street in downtown Nampa. Other than that, folks, you are looking good. So when you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KVOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. The question is, just 2% of people will do this in the month of February. All right, what are we thinking? All right, well, I am alone in the studio today because Vasily is out live. So let's see what folks at home have to say. Greg says buying flowers for a loved one. Just 2% folks. All right, we'll see. Doug says forgetting Valentine's Day. Don't do that. Whatever you do, folks, it is coming up. <laughs> Zena says skip their birthday because it's on February 29th. Oh, that's a heartbreaking one. Okay, folks, some good guesses. Of course, you can always put your guesses in by heading to the CBS 2 News Facebook page or our Twitter. Of course, we'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, people in the Northeast facing a blast of Arctic air this morning. Why some schools in one state are canceling class today. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 545. Welcome back. Thousands of people in the dark following a major ice storm down in Texas. Many of them now looking to city officials for answers on when that power might be restored. Now, Austin's Energy's general manager, Jackie Sargent, says while well, weather conditions have greatly improved, the utility isn't available to give an estimate. We had hoped to make more progress today on restorations, and that simply has not happened. And here's why. The majority of outages from this winter storm are complex, involving heavy construction equipment in areas that are sometimes impassable due to downed trees and branches. To help with the restoration efforts, more than 100 crews from around the state have been sent to Austin. Additional resources have also been requested. City officials there say they hope to have the lights back on sometime later today. While well, people in the Northeast are preparing for an Arctic blast, the wind chill could fall well below negative 20 degrees below zero in some states later today. Now, heavy snow and intense winds causing hazardous conditions across parts of Oswego, New York. This video showing conditions there late last night. The National Weather Service warning neighbors the Arctic blast could bring a burst of heavy snow and wind gusts over 40 miles an hour. Officials are urging locals to remain inside. Well, some schools not holding class today in Worcestershire, Massachusetts, they say the extreme cold is putting kids at risk. Julie McDonald explains. Student safety is at the core of that decision. Difficult decisions to cancel class in communities where more kids could be put at risk during the freezing trips to and from school. In the dangerous cold, we could get frostbite and maybe get sent to the hospital and 
I wouldn't want that for anyone. Boston and Worcester are among the school districts that have canceled Friday. It's a decision leaders know is challenging for working parents, but was made to protect the most vulnerable students. We do think about those children who are dressing themselves, the children who don't have all the layers and all the luxuries. We really had to think about can we expose them to the possibility of being in harm's way? And the decision was no. Middle schoolers don't always wear coats. At her school, there is, we were, had a meeting with her teacher the other day, and there was an entire coat rack that I thought might have been donations. It was the lost and found. In communities like Newton, where there is school Friday, families are planning outfits and adapting routines. Indoor recess, we'll pick them up so they don't have to walk home. Like, I think it'll be fine. I'd probably wear like five layers and like two coats, but my dad says wearing two coats is weird. Bus heaters will be tested and turned on early before boarding students at their stops as quickly as possible. Fun. Weekend will be indoor and we'll all be going crazy <laughs> and we'll be fine. Indoor fun, hot chocolate, marshmallows, we're prepared. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Folks, it is Friday and a warm up, luckily, on the way for us. Let's send it out to Vasily Varlamos, who is not outside as he normally is on Fridays, but inside. Vasily, tell us where you're at. Yeah, I'm inside and it's much warmer here, I promise. So over the next couple of weeks, we are going to be doing these programs with the Kissin' 92 crew. It's going to be a blast. And some timing difficulties hasn't allowed us this half hour to make it in with the crew because they're currently recording their show. But in the 6 o'clock hour, I promise we will be in there and can't get enough of those two. They're an awesome interview. Great to talk to them. And we'll continue to talk to them next hour. But first, let's get to your weather because temperatures are going to be at 42 degrees and we're finally jumping to our average temperature. Now those lows this morning are sitting at about 24 degrees, which is about three degrees below our average. But again, temperature is much warmer than what we've seen over the past week or so. Temperatures were all the way down in the 20s as of just a couple days ago. So a warm up has been in store this week. Now the jet stream is pulling a more of a westerly flow and it's pulling that warmer coastal air into the region. That's why we've been seeing this warm up in temperatures over the last couple of days. Now it's also going to push in some storms that are starting to line up off the coast. We're seeing two low pressure systems lining up and one of them is going to hit us directly in the gym state. We're going to see some snow over in the mountains and here in the valley we'll see some rain over the weekend. It's looking like Sunday when those low pressure systems will make it into the region. Now that's when we'll see those showers and we could see some more showers early next week. Now, as for today we'll see mostly cloudy skies for much of the morning. By the afternoon we may see some breaks in those clouds and we may see a few sun breaks here in the Treasure Valley. By the end of Saturday, we'll start to see some showers moving in the region. We'll see those first impact the lower Treasure Valley and parts of the mountains before it affects us here in the upper Treasure Valley. Moving to the seven day forecast, we're going to see highs in the low to mid 40s throughout much of this week. We'll be at 42 degrees today with that low of 27 degrees tonight and then 45 degrees looking like the high tomorrow. We'll drop to 44 degrees as we see that rain snow mixture. But again, in the valley floors, we'll most likely see rain. We'll see partly cloudy skies on Monday with a high of 42 degrees and that 42 degree high will stick around on Tuesday. We'll see mostly cloudy skies on Wednesday with a high of 41 degrees and then 39 degrees looking like the high on Thursday in the valley. Meanwhile over in the mountains 37 degrees the high today. Temperatures will drop down to 35 degrees on Saturday, Sunday and Monday before they jump up to 36 degrees on Tuesday. Now on Sunday they will see some snow showers over in the mountains. Otherwise they should see dry conditions next week. Wednesday they'll have a high of 34 degrees and Thursday a high of 33 degrees in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. It is 550 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI bringing you teen traffic all morning long. Yeah, folks, it has been a quiet start to your Friday, seeing a few more headlights out there this morning. Uh, right now, everything is looking good. It's cold out there, as Vasily said, but nothing in the way of your Friday commute. So when you do get in the car, make sure you're tuning to Newstalk KBOI. That's 670 a.m or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Well, today's number of the day is three. On February 3rd in 1690, the Massachusetts Bay Colony issued the first paper money in North America. Now it was initially 40,000 pounds, which they used to pay troops. Today, more than $2 trillion of U.S. currency is in circulation. It's made up of more than 53 billion individual notes. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, some of the best football players in the world getting together in Las Vegas. A look at the 2023 Pro Bowl.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 5.54. Welcome back. Super Bowl 57, still more than a week away, but the excitement building as the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs get ready for their battle on football's biggest stage. Workers at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs for the big day. Now on Sunday the 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles competing for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And ahead of the Super Bowl, some of the best football players in the world converging in Las Vegas to show off their skills in front of fans at the 2023 Pro Bowl Games Skills Competition. Now Brian Salmon, sports director for our Sinclair sister station in Vegas, was in the middle of the action at Raiders practice. Take a look. Here in Las Vegas, of course, the sports and entertainment capital of the world for the skills competition for the NFL Pro Bowl. Hey, they love our city so much. They brought the Pro Bowl back for its second go around. And of course, us Las Vegans are extremely happy to have it. And here at the Raiders HQ, the league held its skills competition, which consisted of old school dodgeball minus Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn. Ha ha. And a quarterback competition, which had the Raiders quarterback Derek Carr in it. Yes, the same Derek Carr that was told he's out of here at the end of this season. Hey, hey, we're going to be rooting for him. Derek Carr will be out there. We'll be cheering. <laughs> hey, once a Raider, always a Raider. We're excited to see Derek Carr out there. So, D.C., he showed the Raiders brass. You know what? He still has it. He actually won the skills competition for the quarterback with 31 points, much to the delight of the Raiders faithful in the HQ. Super cool. Not that far from the house. Get a good invite, come down and check out all the, the stars. And as far as the dodgeball competition, it was the offense versus the defense. And in that competition, it was the NFC getting the win. I don't have any idea what dodgeball has to do with competition and skills that NFL players have. But nonetheless, they had it. The players had a great time and the fans had a good time watching it as well. Hey, that's all we have here for Las Vegas. I'm Brian Salmon. Let's get it back to you. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, three bills introduced in the legislature, all with the same goal, how lawmakers are tackling property tax in different ways. Plus, a spy balloon spotted in the sky, where it's from and why officials say they won't take it down. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, moving forward after city officials fire the director of police accountability. What the interim director says is next for the office. Plus, pushing for police reform. The efforts from lawmakers to find common ground. Plus, tonight, fighters going head-to-head -head at the Idaho Central Arena. A look ahead at the Front Strike Street Fights 25. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thanks for waking up with us. This is CBS 2 News This Morning, a live look from downtown Boise on this Friday. It's February 3rd, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson and our own Vasily Varlamos. He is out, not in the elements this morning. He is with our friends Alana and Chris at Kissin 92.3. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Chris and Alana. Good morning, Sarah, and yeah, I'm much warmer in here. I'm hanging out with Alana and Chris in their studio right now, and we want to have a little fun this morning. We're going to do the question of the day with these two. They're going to give their guesses, and I might throw in a guess there as well, but just two people, 2% 2 of people will do this in the month of February. What do you think it is? Oh. That's a good question. Uh, I'm in the 98% uh, if my guess is right, and that is uh, exercise. Exercise? Oh. Yeah. Right? Like that guess. Mm -hmm. like that is a solid one. Thank you. That's really <laughs> solid. I'm going to say, ooh, that's good. Yeah. Keep their resolution. I might go with that Ooh, one. Keep oh, their, oh, I actually really like that guess. I'm not going to steal it in front of her. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say 
You know, I'm going to be negative this morning. How about okay. it? I'm going to say break up in the month of February because, you know, it's oh, Valentine's Day. One. So we'll go with that. But first, let's get to your weather in 60 before we do some more guesses with Sarah later on in the hour. Now, as for today, we still have that weather advisory in effect. We have an air stagnation advisory in effect until about 1 p.m. today. Now, we may see some light haze in the valley, but we are going to see we may see some winds this morning that will break up that inversion. So that haze may not be as heavy as it was yesterday. Now, by 6 a.m. or by 7 a.m., we'll stay at 24 degrees before we jump up to 26 degrees at 8 a.m. And when I head out the door this morning, you will notice a little bit warmer temperatures than the last couple of mornings, uh, 33 degrees by 11 o'clock. And then we'll jump to 42 degrees, which will be our high today in Boise around 3 p.m. We'll see mostly cloudy skies today. Now, 42 going to be the high in Boise, 40 degrees looking like the high in Nampa and in Emmett, and 41 degrees going to be the high over in Caldwell. And then moving up to the mountains, 37 degrees is going to be the high in McCall today. Now, tonight, we're going to see temperatures drop down to 27 degrees. We'll see mostly cloudy skies. And tomorrow, we'll jump up 3 degrees to 45 degrees with mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. Now, thank you, Vasily. Looking forward to that warm up. It is 602 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you teen traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning, folks looking good. It is cold though. Make sure you're bundling up before heading out, but your commute is looking clear so far this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you're tuned to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. It's been less than a month since the interim police of accountability took over on January 10th. Now city officials firing the previous director, Jesus Hara. The mayor saying for invasion of privacy. CBS 2's Michaela Elich spoke with Nicole Schaefer about how she plans to move the department forward. No, it, it never even crossed my mind. Working as a new interim director for the Office of Police Accountability was never on Nicole Schaefer's list of to-dos. But when the opportunity presented itself, she says she knew she had to take it. As an administrative role, I thought I would be a good fit and be able to give back to my community by taking on this interim responsibility. Schaefer currently works for the city of Boise in the attorney's office and has years of leadership experience. So I'm the criminal senior manager um, over the 16 deputy prosecuting attorneys that we have in the office. Um, I've been a prosecutor for 25 years, all in the state of Idaho. It was just last month, Boise City Council voted five to one to remove acting OPA director Jesus Hara. After Mayor McLean said Hara was reviewing random recorded police body cam videos, claiming it was an invasion of privacy. This happened after the city conducted conducted an investigation into retired police officer Matt Bringleson, who was found participating in a white nationalist conference. So Nicole, amid all the problems, not just here, but everywhere, how can you ensure that police and departments are being held accountable? I'm following the mandates of the city regulations and making sure that um, the Office of Accountability is upholding those as well. While serving in this position isn't permanent for Schaefer, she says her goal is to help move the department forward. I think it is important to, um, as a council, as a city, know what's going on and know if there's anything we can do to make changes to help um, make sure that law enforcement is acting in our best interest and we're acting in theirs. Well, President Biden hopeful that Congress can work out a deal on police reform. Now on Thursday, members of the Congressional Black Caucus spoke with the president at the White House. The Democrats say they're ready to work with Republicans on a bill. We are committed to meaningful, uh, substantive reforms and a focus on public safety for all communities. The group's chairman saying there is agreement on a way forward, but gave few specifics. Right now, the White House is calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. Well, here in Idaho, three bills aimed at property or providing property tax relief from homeowners, they're being introduced. They all have the same goal, each one proposing a different approach to get there. Senator Scott Groh is proposing dedicating 4.5% of the state sales tax revenue to what would essentially be ongoing property tax rebates for homeowners. I feel that the existing state tax structure is too high, as evidenced by the ongoing budget surpluses we've had for the last two years. I know there's stock of recession. I still feel that structurally 
We've got money to handle this. Representative Bruce Scoggs' bill would restore an annual property tax index. Right now, property tax exemption, it's capped at $100,000 or 50% of a home's value. This bill would bring that exemption back up initially to about $224,000, then increase as home value increases. Commercial since 2016, just on those, is paying 24.1% less in taxes. Homeowners are paying 20.5% more since that time. So that is the inequality that has happened, and that's just on those old properties. And the third bill from Speaker Mike Moye has components of both the first two bills, but would create a new $300 million fund called the School District Facility Fund. Those schools could then use that money to pay off school bonds and levies. That the school districts don't have the funds to take care of. This provides that opportunity. Tax relief again on the other side because the taxpayers don't have to take tax themselves to pay for it. If one or all three make it to the House floor, they'll be sure. There surely will be a lot of debate. We'll see which solutions lawmakers think might work best in the coming weeks. Well, folks, tonight you can see the hard-hitting action of Front Street Fights 25. It's at the Idaho Central Arena, and CBS2 caught up with some of the fighters to ask what fans can expect. You can expect to see a whole lot of excitement. If you've never seen a uh, sanctioned fight with two trained athletes, uh, you're really in for a treat. Uh, when you see me perform, you see a style, you see an art behind it that I've been practicing my whole life. I get really excited about my teammates fighting more so than when I fight, just because I, I know what they've gone through. It's just going to be an exciting card. We have some bangers on the card, so it's going to be a night of incredible fights. You can see it all starting at 7 p.m. You can still get tickets at the arena box office or Ticketmasters online. They start at just 25 bucks. Well, folks, let's switch gears to weather because Vasily Varlamos not in the studio today. Well, maybe a different studio hanging out with our friends in at Kissin 92.3. Vasily, good morning. Yeah, not in our studio, our regular studio. I'm actually here at the Kissin 92.3 studio with Alana and Chris. And just so people can get to know you guys a little bit better, how did you guys get into radio? Well, I, now, for, let me go on record, by the way, Alana, saying I am Team Nepo Baby. <laughs> uh, but Alana Lynn's dad is like a radio legend mm -hmm. in New Mexico, so she didn't really have any other choice. I didn't. <laughs> I, di I didn't know how to do anything else, and, and my dad did it, so I was like, Hey, why don't I do this too? <laughs> and so was he doing country music as well? Or is that where you kind of found your love for country music? Yeah, he was, he's was. he been in country music his entire career. In fact, he still does it up in northern New York right now where it's freezing. It's minus 25, <laughs> I think, today. Um, so he's still doing it. And yeah, you fall in love with the format, but you also fall in love with the people too. Awesome. Yeah, well, it is chilly over there. And it's quite chilly out there this morning too. We're sitting at about 24 degrees outside right now. And temperatures will jump up to 42 degrees as our high today. Now, today we are going to see lots of cloud cover. We'll see afternoon sun breaks as those clouds start to clear, and then we'll see some slightly breezy conditions. Now, on Saturday, we are going to stay dry, and today we'll stay dry as well, but by Saturday night and then Sunday morning, we will see some showers move into the region. Now, those showers will be scattered, and we'll see mostly rain here in the valley, but as you head up to higher elevations, we could see some snowfall. And then early next week, we'll stay mostly dry on Monday and Tuesday. We may see a few isolated showers, but we could see some some evening showers on Tuesday and then on Wednesday we'll see some scattered showers here in the valley. Now as for the next couple of days we are going to see that gradual warm up continue and we'll jump above average by the weekend and then we'll see mostly dry conditions through Saturday and we'll see some scattered showers on Sunday. Now hour by hour we'll be at 28 degrees at 9 a.m. and then we'll break 30 degrees around 10 and then by 1 p.m. we'll be at 37 degrees leading to our high today of 42 degrees. That's going to come at 3 p.m. Now for the five day forecast we will jump up to 245 degrees on Saturday. That's looking like the highest temperature of the week. Then we'll drop down to 44 degrees on Sunday and we'll drop back down to average on Monday and Tuesday. 42 degrees looking like the high on Monday and 42 degrees also going to be the high on Tuesday. We'll see a gradual decrease in temperatures as we head into early next week, but we're still going to stay right around average. We'll drop down into the high 30s by Thursday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It is 611 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking?
Good morning, Sarah. Looking great. Uh, doing just fine. Usually is pretty quiet this time of the morning. You can see in some of the camera shots, uh, nothing going. Might start to get some uh, merge slowing in Meridian in a bit. Uh, I-84 eastbound, but uh, usually Fridays can be a little lighter than usual in the mornings. All is uh, good. Driving conditions fine and traffic very light, even away from the freeways. Spots like Eagle Road or Fairview, Chinden State, all good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead, a spy balloon spotted in the sky. Where it's from and why officials say they won't take it down. Plus, a company in Utah hoping to popularize a different kind of air travel. A look at the flying motorcycle they're working on. And it's time for our question of the day. Taking a look at yesterday's question. A new study says this is the most important thing you need to be content at work. The answer, a window. Well, that seems simple. Now for today's question, just 2% of people will do this in the month of February. Folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.15. Welcome back. The Pentagon saying it believes a Chinese spy balloon has been floating over the continental U.S. for a few days. Now, it was spotted yesterday over Billings, Montana, which is home to some of the nation's most sensitive nuclear missile facilities. Officials say they're tracking the balloon, but have chosen not to take it down. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the latest. A large round object has been seen floating near Billings, Montana, big enough for residents to spot from the ground. But what the heck is that? That's not the sun. And according to my little planet guide, it's not a planet. The Pentagon says it has been tracking a high altitude surveillance balloon almost certainly launched by China. NORAD has followed it in U.S. airspace for days. The balloon is currently traveling at an altitude well above commercial air traffic and does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground. Right now, there is a ground stop on our airport and this thing is up in the sky. Air traffic was halted at the Billings Airport for two hours Wednesday. A source familiar with the situation tells CBS News fighter jets were scrambled as President Biden considered shooting the balloon down, but the Pentagon advised against it, concerned falling debris could be a danger to civilians. Montana is home to one of the nation's nuclear missile fields. Officials say they took steps to protect sensitive sites. They have done this before, but it's it's not common, and the, the surveillance balloon is uh, believed to be loitering longer than previous uh, surveillance balloons uh, that the Chinese have sent over. This comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken was expected to travel to Beijing this weekend to meet with the Chinese president. Overnight, China's foreign ministry said, quote, we hope both sides can handle the matter calmly and prudently. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Well, hey, take a look at this. A Utah drone company developing a flying motorcycle. Yeah, you heard that right. It's essentially a drone capable of carrying a person. The team at Electrafly designs custom drones, mostly meant for deliveries, but their dream is to use that technology to make flying more accessible. They hope that one day the technology will be ready to, for people to make it use this for their daily commute to work. Cool stuff. All right, well, let's switch gears to weather because Vasily Varlamos on Fridays, he is normally out in the elements, but instead he is at the Kissin 92.3 studio with some good friends. Good morning, Vasily. Yeah, hanging out in the Kissin studio right now with Alana and Chris. And for our viewers that don't know, when are you guys on in the morning at on 92.3? We start nice and early, kind of like you guys. So we start at 530 and go till 10. Oh, awesome. So a things you can do throughout the morning to or to listen into sorry and so for that too like what are we going to be doing over the next couple of weeks i know we're going to be doing some segments like better than alana and a couple other things so it's going to be a blast it's going to be very fun and we get to because we live here in the treasure valley uh unlike some other radio stations Stop uh, throwing shade. <laughs> but we get to talk about because we love living here you know mm -hmm. and we know you guys do too and so we get to talk about all the cool things that are happening like maybe in the weekend maybe just you know cool events mm -hmm. uh or uh fun 
community uh, things that just happen here in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, because there's so much to enjoy, and we got a ton of fun stuff coming up. So tune in to Kissin' 92.3 or here on CBS2. We're going to have a ton of stuff coming up for you next week. But getting to the weather today, we're going to have a high of 42 degrees. That's sitting just at our average. Now, that low temperature is just below average. We're, going to, we're sitting at a low of 24 degrees this morning. Now, again, both are below average, but we're going to see a steady warming due to the jet stream shifting into more of a westerly flow. Now, this flow will be pulling pulling in warmer coastal air that is going to push temperatures above average by tomorrow. Now temperatures will stay above average all weekend and then we'll stay at our average as we go into early next week. And then we do have some low pressure systems lining up off the coast and one of those are aimed at the Gem State and should arrive on Sunday. Now as for today we're going to see mostly cloudy skies for much of the morning. By the afternoon we'll see a chance of some sun breaks in the valley. We may see a, some clearing of those clouds and then the mountains will remain cloudy all day today. We'll see those clouds stick around on Saturday and by the end Saturday we may see some showers move into the region on Sunday morning. Now as for highs today we're going to jump up to 42 degrees, 45 degrees the high on Saturday. And we'll see mostly cloudy skies on Saturday with the rain snow mixture on Sunday. See a high of 44 on Sunday before temperatures drop down to 42 on Monday and Tuesday. 41 looking like the high on Wednesday and 39 going to be the high on Thursday in the valley. Meanwhile over in the mountains 35 degrees looking like the high tomorrow Sunday and on Monday before temperatures jump up to 36 degrees on Tuesday. We'll see partly to mostly cloudy guys most days this week over in the mountains they may see some snow showers on sunday highs are going to be at 34 degrees on wednesday and 33 degrees on thursday thank you vasily it is 6 20 on your friday cbs 2 news and news talk kboi bringing you team traffic all morning long let's send it out to ron o'brien in the news talk traffic center how's it looking ron not bad at all. Doing uh, quite well. Usually that's the case this time of the morning. And uh, ID4, of course, the typical hot spot tends to be the emerge areas in Meridian. But nothing really showing up there consistently yet, even at this point this morning. And quite elsewhere, it's uh, pretty light traffic all the way around on a Friday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Oh, thank you, Ron. When you do eventually get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, raising awareness for cardiovascular disease this National Wear Red Day. Why the American Heart Association wants more women to ask about their risk for heart attacks. Plus, a new COVID variant causing concern. Why health experts say you may see more people getting sick. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 624. Welcome back. Today is National Wear Red Day. It's when the American Heart Association encourages the wearing of red to raise awareness about cardiovascular disease in women. The association says less than half of women recognize that heart disease is the number one killer of females. NYU Langone cardiologist Dr. Harmony Reynolds says it's vital that women seek help for all types of possible symptoms of potential cardiovascular problems. It's scary to think, could this be a heart attack? I think that people don't go to the hospital because they're afraid that it might be a heart attack and then what? Well, then what is we treat it. The Heart Association says life events, including pregnancy, menopause, and stress, can impact cardiac health. Well, we're learning new information today about one of the newest subvariants of Omicron. It's now circulating the globe and appears to bypass some of what currently keeps us from getting sick from coronavirus. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how. Hey there, everybody. This new variant has the potential to interrupt progress that has us moving toward the end of the pandemic, according to those tracking it. And here's why. Not only does CH.1.1 or the Orthrus COVID-19 subvariant of Omicron appear to have a Delta-like mutation, which caused a deadly COVID surge early on in the pandemic, but this new preprint study from researchers at Ohio State University found it's on the list of variants and subvariants that evade what are called neutralizing antibodies. Those come from previous infection or vaccines. They neutralize or defend your cells against the virus to keep it from entering the body. Without that ability, this newer Orthrus CH.1.1 could spread like wildfire. You know, it's hard to believe they will be more infectious than the uh, current variants out there, the XBB variant, which is very highly contagious. We'll just have to wait and see. 
The latest CDC numbers show CH.1.1 is now responsible for just under about 2% of U.S. new cases. While that's low for now, the other reason this could slow the much sought after end of the pandemic is that as it evolves, as with any new variant or subvariant, it has the potential to take on new properties and wreak havoc in the body in ways we've not seen before. It's always a game of catch up with, uh, with COVID, trying to figure out what the new variants are doing. It has now been reported in 60 different countries. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Coming up on CBS 2 News, three bills introduced in the legislature, all with the same goal. How lawmakers are tackling property tax in different ways. And a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 for your Friday night. Don't forget to join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And here's our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, moving forward after city officials fired the director of police accountability, what the interim director says is next for the office. Plus, pushing for police reform, the efforts from lawmakers to find common ground. Plus tonight, fighters going head to head at the Idaho Central Arena, a look ahead at Front Street Fights 25. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. Usually I'm out in the elements on Fridays, but today I'm a little bit warmer and I get to hang out with Alana and Chris here in their studio. And guys, there's some big music events coming up. We got the Grammys coming up this week. Let's talk a little bit about that. Go ahead, look. I, listen, there, there are so many great um, nominations at this year's Grammys coming up on Sunday night. Um, one of my favorite to keep an eye out for, of course, Zach Bryan. Zach Bryan's going to be coming to town this summer, so keep an eye out for him. Something in the Orange, incredible, incredible single from him. And also for Best Country Album, Ashley McBride is another one who did uh, Welcome to Lindyville. And let me tell you, that is a piece of artwork. I oh, definitely got to tune into that because I don't think I've listened to that yet. But I know Luke Combs also up for Best Country Album, too. So didn't know he didn't have a Grammy yet. Maybe he'll win one this year. We'll see. Or maybe it'll be McBride, too. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Got to tune in for that on CBS. But otherwise, let's go to your weather in 60. Now, today we are going to see temperatures at 42 degrees. But we're also going to see a little bit of haze in the air today. That air weather, air stagnation advisory is still in effect today. Now, we are going to see that in effect till about 1 p.m. today. Now, as for your breakfast forecast, we're going to be at 24 degrees at 7 a.m. Temperatures will jump up slightly up 2 degrees at 8 a.m. to 26 degrees. Now, when you head out the door this morning, we will jump out of the 20s at around 10 o'clock and we'll be at 33 degrees at 11 a.m. We'll see temperatures jump up to 37 degrees at 1 p.m., leading to our high today of 42 degrees. That's going to come at 3 p.m. and we'll stick around till about 5 or 6 p.m. Now, 42 degrees the high in Boise, but it'll be a little chillier in the lower Treasure Valley. 40 degrees in Nampa and 41 degrees is going to be the high in Caldwell. 40 degrees also going to be the high over in Emmett. And as we move up to the mountains, 37 degrees looking like the high in McCall today. Now tonight we'll see temperatures drop down to 27 degrees. We'll see mostly cloudy skies and then tomorrow 45 degrees and mostly cloudy skies in Boise. Thank you Vasily. Looking forward to that little warm up. It's 632 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, everything is looking good out there, folks. It is cold, but we are looking clear as far as your commute. So when you do get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. It's been less than a month since the interim director of police accountability took over on January 10th. City officials firing the previous director, Jesus Hara, the mayor says for invasion of privacy. CBS 2's Michaela Elich spoke with Nicole Schaefer about how she plans to move the department forward. No, Ed, it never even crossed my mind. Working as a new interim director for the Office of Police Accountability was never on Nicole Schaefer's list of to-dos. But when the opportunity presented itself, she says she knew she had to take it. As an administrative role, I thought I would be a good fit and be able to give back to my community by taking on this interim responsibility. 
Schaefer currently works for the City of Boise in the Attorney's Office and has years of leadership experience. So I'm the Criminal Senior Manager um, over the 16 Deputy Prosecuting Attorneys that we have in the office. Um, I've been a prosecutor for 25 years, all in the state of Idaho. It was just last month, Boise City Council voted 5-1 to one to remove Acting OPA Director Jesus Hara. After Mayor McLean said Hara was reviewing random recorded police body cam videos, claiming it was an invasion of privacy. This happened after the city conducted an investigation into retired police officer Matt Bringleson, who was found participating in a white nationalist conference. So, Nicole, amid all the problems, not just here, but everywhere, how can you ensure that police and departments are being held accountable? I'm following the mandates of the city regulations and making sure that um, the Office of Accountability is upholding those as well. While serving in this position isn't permanent for Schaefer, she says her goal is to help move the department forward. I think it is important to, um, as a council, as a city, know what's going on and know if there's anything we can do to make changes to help um, make sure that law enforcement is acting in our best interest and we're acting in theirs. Turning to national news, President Biden hopeful that Congress can work out a deal on police reform. Now yesterday, members of the Congressional Black Caucus spoke with the president at the White House. They say the Democrats are ready to work with Republicans on a bill. The group's chairman said there is an agreement moving forward, but gave few specifics. The White House, meantime, is calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which limits unnecessary uses of force, restricts the use of no-knock warrants and chokeholds, and limits qualified immunity for police. Well, back here in Idaho, three bills are aimed at providing property tax relief for homeowners. They are all the same goal, but each one proposes a different approach. Senator Scott Groh is proposing dedicating about 4.5% of the state's sales tax revenue to what would essentially be ongoing property tax rebates to homeowners. I feel that the existing state tax structure is too high, as evidenced by the ongoing budget surpluses we've had for the last two years. I know there was talk of recession. I still feel that structurally we've got money to handle this. Representative Bruce Scoggs' bill would restore an annual property tax index. Right now, property tax exemption is capped at $100,000 or 50% of the home's value. This bill would bring that exemption back up initially to about $224,000, then increase as the home value increases. Commercial since 2016, just on those, is paying 24.1% less in taxes homeowners are paying 20.5% more since that time. So that is the inequality that has happened, and that's just on those old properties. And the third bill from Speaker Mike Moyle has components of both of the first two bills, but would create a new $300 million fund called the School District Facility Fund. Those schools could then use the money to pay off school bonds and levies. That the school districts don't have the funds to take care of. This provides that opportunity. Tax relief again on the other side because the taxpayers don't have to take tax themselves to pay for it. If one or all three make it to the House floor, there is sure to be a lot of debate. We'll see which solutions lawmakers think might work best in the coming weeks. Well, tonight you can see the hard-hitting action of Front Street Fights 25 at the Idaho Central Arena. CBS2 caught up with some of the fighters to ask what fans can expect. You can expect to see a whole lot of excitement. If you've never seen a uh, sanctioned fight with two trained athletes, uh, you're really in for a treat. Uh, when you see me perform, you see a style, you see an art behind it that I've been practicing my whole life. I get really excited about my teammates fighting more so than when I fight, just because I, I know what they've gone through. It's just going to be an exciting card. We have some bangers on the card, so it's going to be a night of incredible fights. You can see it all starting at 7 p.m. tonight. You can get tickets at the Arena Box Office or Ticketmaster Online. They start at just 25 bucks. All right, folks, it is Friday. Let's switch over to the weather where Vasily normally out in the elements inside another station this morning. But hey, at least you're looking warm. Good morning, Vasily. 
Yeah, I am warm over here in a different studio. I'm in the 92.3 studio with Alana and Chris. They're on Monday through Friday from 5.30 in the morning till about 10 o'clock. And we're going to be doing a ton of fun stuff with them over the next couple of weeks and months. We're going to be playing some fun games with each other. And can you explain to people what Better Than Alana is? Yeah, so you're going to find out uh, firsthand, Vasily, at 7.30. It's a three-question trivia game where you're representing for Kiss and Country uh, three... Mm, probably Vasily skewed questions. I would imagine so. Alana, but it's three general trivia questions. Person that gets it right usually wins uh, fabulous prizes. Nice. Well, yeah, not, you, you're not allowed. You're not eligible to win. Yeah, so I heard I don't win the prizes, no. but I am excited to win. Just letting you know. Alana. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But first, let's kick it over to weather real quick. Today, we're going to have a high of 42 degrees. We're going to see lots of cloud cover here in the valley today. Now, we may see a few sun breaks today in the afternoon, but otherwise, we're going to see those cloudy skies all weekend and we're going to see some slightly breezy conditions today that may help up break up a little of the inversion that we're going to see now as for the chances of precipitation we're going to stay dry today we'll also stay dry for most of saturday now we may see some showers move into the region on saturday night and we'll see some scattered showers all day on sunday it will mostly be rain on the valley floor but up in the up in higher elevations we are going to see a, a wintry mix if those showers come in the morning now on monday and tuesday we'll stay mostly dry but we could see another front move into the region that could bring some showers on Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. Now, we'll see that gradual warm-up this week. We're going to see temperatures continue to warm as we go into the weekend. We'll be above average this weekend. Our average is 42 degrees. Now, we'll stay mostly dry through Saturday, and we'll see those scattered showers on Sunday. Now, moving to the hour-by-hour -hour forecast, we'll be at 30 degrees at 10 a.m. Temperatures will jump up to 35 degrees by noon, leading to our high today by 3 p.m. of 42 degrees. 45 degrees looking like the high tomorrow, and we'll be at 44 degrees on Sunday. Then temperatures will drop back to down to our average of 42 degrees on Monday and on Tuesday, and we'll continue to see a slight decrease in temperatures as we go throughout the next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. Looking forward to it. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you teen traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. How's it going, Ron? Well, not much kicking in quite yet. It's been minimal in Meridian on I-84 as far as the slowdowns go for the freeway drive. A little bit, though. The merge areas, you got to look out a little bit. Getting out the door, nothing major to get in the way other than construction spots. Hit those real quick. Uh, all four directions, a couple of areas. The roundabout work continues at Victory and Locust Grove and Meridian. So barricades up there. And the latest spot in Nampa for almost the next four months, Robinson Road and Airport Road. No through traffic on Robinson between Victory and Stam Lane. And no full through traffic on Airport Road between Happy Valley and McDermott. So uh, that's the latest spot for Nampa. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, folks, it's the time you've been waiting for our question of the day. That question, just 2% of people will do this in the month of February. All right, folks, just 2%. Let's see what folks at home have to say. Douglas says, make a major purchase, your car, home, etc." Ooh, a good one. Chris, continue their New Year's resolutions. Ooh, I think that, mm, that might be the one. Bruce, taking a vacation. Okay, guys, I love all of these. You still have 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by going to our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come, people in the Northeast facing a blast of Arctic air this morning. Why some schools in one state are canceling class today. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 645. Welcome back. Thousands of people in the dark following a major ice storm down in Texas. Many of them now looking to city officials for answers on when power might be restored. Now, Austin's Energy General Manager Jackie Sargent says while weather conditions have greatly improved, the utility isn't able to give an estimate. But they hope to have the lights back on sometime later today. Well, people in the Northeast are preparing for a blast of Arctic air. The wind chill could fall well below negative 20 degrees in some states today. Now, heavy snow and intense wind causing hazardous conditions across parts of Oswego, New York. 
This video showing conditions there late last night. Ooh. The National Weather Service warning neighbors that the Arctic blast would bring a heavy burst of snow and wind gusts could be over 40 miles an hour. Officials urging locals to remain inside. Well, some schools aren't holding class today. Worcestershire, Massachusetts is one of them. They say extreme cold is putting kids at risk. Julie McDonald explains. Student safety is at the core of that decision. Difficult decisions to cancel class in communities where more kids could be put at risk during the freezing trips to and from school. In the dangerous cold, we could get frostbite and maybe get sent to the hospital. And I wouldn't want that for anyone. Boston and Worcester are among the school districts that have canceled Friday. It's a decision leaders know is challenging for working parents, but was made to protect the most vulnerable students. We do think about those children who are dressing themselves, the children who don't have all the layers and all the luxuries. We really had to think about, can we expose them to the possibility of being in harm's way? And the decision was no. Middle schoolers don't always wear coats at her school. <laughs> There is, we were, had a meeting with her teacher the other day, and there was an entire coat rack that I thought might have been donations. It was the lost and found. In communities like Newton, where there is school Friday, families are planning outfits and adapting routines. Indoor recess, we'll pick them up so they don't have to walk home. Like, I think it'll be fine. I'd probably wear like five layers and like two coats, but my dad says wearing two coats is weird. Bus heaters will be tested and turned on early before boarding students at their stops as quickly as possible. Fun. Weekend will be indoor and we'll all be going crazy <laughs> and we'll be fine. Indoor fun, hot chocolate, marshmallows, we're prepared. That yeah, sounds like a good time. Speaking of a good time, let's send it over to Vasily Varlamos, who's with our friends Alana and Chris at Kissin 92.3 FM. Take it away. Yeah, it's a great time here at Kissin 92.3. We're chilling live in the studio with Alana and Chris. And guys, this has been a fun day so far. We've yeah. really just gotten to know you guys here. Our viewers have gotten to know you. And just a little bit more, can you just tell us a little bit more about your guys' show and just where you guys are going to do today moving forward for the rest of the next couple hours? Yeah, so um, we are going to do, of course, Better Than Alana with you. I can't wait, by the way, to find out who was right with this question of the day answer. Um, that's going to be really exciting. And then just kind of take you through some country music news that's going on and some of the weird things that are, are happening in the world. Yeah, it's, and uh, just be ready. Be on your game. Mm -hmm. because And Kiss 92.3 at 7.30, Vasily versus Alana. Don't miss that. Oh, it's going to be a blast. I'm really excited for it. And I'm also really excited for today. We're going to see a high of 42 degrees, a little bit warmer than what we've seen over the past couple of days. Now, that's just about our average for this time of year at 42 degrees. Now, our low temperature this morning of 24 degrees, just a little bit lower than our average, but temperature is slowly inching just above average over the next couple of days. Now, that's due to the jet stream shifting into more of a westerly flow. Now this flow is going to pull in warmer coastal air that is going to push temperatures above average by tomorrow. Now temperatures still stay abo above average all weekend. Now some low pressure systems are starting to line up off the coast and one of them is aimed at the gem state. We should see those showers arrive late on Saturday night and into Sunday. Now as for today we're seeing mostly cloudy skies for much of the morning. By the afternoon we may see a few sun breaks here in the valley. The mountains will see clouds throughout the day today. And clouds will stick around tomorrow. We're going to see mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. By the end of Saturday, we may start to see those showers move into the region. Over in the lower Treasure Valley, they'll see those showers first before it makes its way into the upper valley. Now, in the Treasure Valley today, we'll have that high of 42 degrees. Temperatures will jump up to 45 degrees on Saturday before dropping to 44 degrees on Sunday. Then we'll see temperatures drop to 42 on Monday and Tuesday. We'll see partly cloudy skies on Monday before mostly cloudy skies return on Tuesday and on Wednesday. Wednesday, we'll have that high of 41 degrees, and then we'll see some some of the clouds clear up with partly cloudy skies on Thursday and a high of 39 degrees here in the valley. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, 37 degrees is going to be the high today. Temperatures will drop down to 35 degrees on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And that low temperature on Monday morning will drop down to 18 degrees. So a little bit chillier temperatures coming to the mountains. But we'll see temperatures range up to 36 on Tuesday before dropping to 34 on Wednesday and 33 on Thursday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. 
Well, not a whole lot going. ID4, a little bit of crowding in the uh, Meridian stretch. Of course, that's to be expected at various times. It hasn't been real bad, though. No long delays. And volume has uh, picked up a little bit. Some other spots. It'll busy up more so in the 7 o'clock hour, as always. But, uh, in general, doing good on a Friday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come, some of the best football players in the world getting together in Las Vegas. A look at the Pro Bowl 2023. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 553, welcome back. The Super Bowl 57, still more than a week away, but the excitement, it's building as Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs fans get ready to watch the battle on football's biggest stage. Workers at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs for the big day. Now on Sunday, the 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles compete for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Now ahead of the Super Bowl, some of the best players in the world converging in Vegas to show off their skills in front of fans at the 2023 Pro Bowl Game Skill Competition. Mouthful. Well, Brian Salmon, sports director from our Sinclair sister station in Vegas, was in the middle of practice for the Raiders. Take a look. Here in Las Vegas, of course, the sports and entertainment capital of the world for the skills competition for the NFL Pro Bowl. Hey, they love our city so much. They brought the Pro Bowl back for its second go round. Of course, us Las Vegans are extremely happy to have it. And here at the Raiders HQ, the league held its skills competition, which consisted of old school dodgeball minus Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn. Ha ha. And a quarterback competition, which had the Raiders quarterback Derek Carr in it. Yes, the same Derek Carr that was told he's out of here at the end of this season. Hey, hey, we're going to be rooting for him. Derek Carr will be out there. We'll be cheering. <laughs> hey, once a Raider, always a Raider. We're excited to see Derek Carr out there. So, D.C., he showed the Raiders brass. You know what? He still has it. He actually won the skills competition for the quarterback with 31 points, much to the delight of the Raiders faithful in the HQ. Super cool. Not that far from the house. Get a good invite, come down and check out all the, the stars. And as far as the dodgeball competition, it was the offense versus the defense. And in that competition, it was the NFC getting the win. I don't have any idea what dodgeball has to do with competition and skills that NFL players have, but nonetheless, they had it. The players had a great time and the fans had a good time watching it as well. Hey, that's all we have here for Las Vegas. I'm Brian Salmon. Let's get it back to you. Thank you, Brian. Well, now time for our question of the day, folks. Just 2% of people will do this during the month of February. Lots of good guesses, but the answer, taking down their Christmas tree. Okay, that might have been me last year, folks, but great guesses out there, folks. Have a great Friday. We'll see you back here at 11 a.m. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 mobile app. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.